Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. Today's episode of Frankenstein Control is brought to you by D's Nuts. Moving on. Welcome to Frankenstein Control. <laughs> That's my favorite brand of nuts. It is a real brand. It is. Yeah. You can get D's Nuts. It's pretty good. Like D-E-E-S. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, D's a bird. I was very compelled to buy some. Oh, why didn't you? I don't know. I think it might have been like around the time COVID was started. Oh. Uh, like, I have you, to go into survival mode. I can't spend money on things. No, nah, true. The, the economy could collapse and I need this nut money. <laughs> I can't, can't go blowing my wads on nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Jen's just like, honey, what did you spend all our money on? D's nuts. Ada, could you? <laughs> We're financially ruined. Ada, could you put a bunch of gross splat noises after you say that line sure <laughs> yay <laughs> uh, here they are again <laughs> ah, wee! welcome to Frankenstein Control I'm your host the Nut King Taylor Russell <laughs> uh, and my Nut Queen and, uh, is in front of me I'm the Nut Queen and I, I have all the semen <laughs> oh god I hoard it and to the left of me, as always, is Nut Rye. I'm I'm B Rye. I'm I'm the the Viscount of Cashews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I always forget that it's pronounced Viscount. I like that word. That's why I don't forget it. It's spelled like Viscount. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Viscount. Yeah. No, I, I've like, only read whenever that. I read it, I was like, "Oh, this is a fancy word. It must be pronounced something like Viscount or something. <laughs> Not Viscount Viscuit. or Viscount or no, it's no, pronounced no. eggplant. It's <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the eggplant of Canterbury. Uh, speaking of Canterbury, um, when's the last time you had a cream egg? Cream egg? Yeah, I never liked them because like something about the sugary quality and like the creaminess of it, it like. Makes me feel sick. Like if, uh, if I eat a, like a lot of candy in a short oh, yeah. period of time, I get that weird like yeah, just stomach uncomfortable. I I kind of and like a little bit of like a kind of like a headache almost. Yeah, like a little bit of one, like a nauseous kind of feeling. Yeah, I, I got that a, a couple weeks ago when Brian was over. Uh, oh, you got vaping? Well, no. Uh, we bought all that junk food. Oh yeah. You guys made me go to the grocery store and buy you all a bunch of candy, <laughs> and I did because I'm a huge cuck and. Uh, <laughs> Well, you'd be a, you'd only be a cuck if you didn't eat any of it. No, I ate plenty of it. Yeah. I ate too much of it. I got fucking <laughs> sick. So the real cuck was still me because I yeah. cucked myself out of a good time. <laughs> Self cuckling. When's oh the last God. time you had a Cadbury cream egg beer? I feel like it has to have been about three or four years. I um, grew up. I, I I think I've talked about her on the podcast before, but the lady who raised me, whose house I went to after school, yeah. she was from England, and she would get me Cadbury eggs all the time from over there. Oh wow! And they were good as shit, and I liked them. Um, she's like, have a real Cadbury egg. It doesn't taste like American vomit chocolate. Yeah, it's it, the, they're so sweet that a little of them goes a long way. I I did like them, but I would I if I ate one, I did not want another one. <laughs> that's that's my relationship with Cadbury eggs. Uh, if I ate one, I did not want another one. I was like, that was enough. <laughs> that, that was enough. So like on a sort of topic i did mention the vomit chocolate thing yeah that's like a real thing american chocolate just like actually tastes gross by design oh yeah especially there's like a spoiled Hershey's. milk thing what especially, especially Hershey's. Hershey's. well see here's the thing though and this just totally tracks with the fact that i like i fucking love garbage i like hershey's chocolate i do too i think it's good i like it but there is a sour milk taste to specifically american chocolate that yeah. is added in now because we got used to it do you know why that is? Did you read about that? Is it like a Great Depression thing? There's a Great Depression thing where something like something about it's always a Great Depression thing. If it's yeah. about why certain things are are or it are could be up. are fucked up, yeah, pretty much. Or it could be like an import during wartime thing, oh. or something like that. So some 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 event occurred. Some conglomeration of historical forces uh, made it so that like in order to make chocolate chocolate you have to like bind the cocoa to something and milk is like the best agent to do that and there was no pasteurization back then or something so like all the milk 
chocolate that they made in America would spoil in storage. Oh my god. And so like it was still edible. It wouldn't make you sick because there wasn't enough like spoilage of the milk. But it had just enough to give it that slight twinge of hmm, something right here. Yeah. Which Americans grew to like we that's we, we were so used to that being that, what chocolate tasted like. I think like, that's that just we, what exactly happened to me. I just grew used to how gross American chocolate is and now I think it's good. Yeah. I try European chocolate I'm like, mm, that's good too. So like now, it's not like I don't like European chocolate or some shit, yeah. but like I I don't dislike American chocolate. Now with modern pasteurization and like techniques, like they they don't have to make chocolate that way, but because that's what Americans expect chocolate to taste like, they have to like artificially go back and add the sour milk taste into our chocolate. Wow. And that's a thing they have to do. Huh. Well, I mean, that I I knew bits and pieces of that, but I didn't know the full story. I thought People just threw up in the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Hoshi, we got a new brand of chocolate for you. It's a new batch for it to, to press into the bars. Hold up, I've got one more finishing touch to it. <gasps> <laughs> oh, this God. Is, this is Johnny. Um, he He's he's a chocolate vomiter over he's at our the, chocolate the Hershey's vomiter. plant. He's our chockey vomer. Chockey vomer. <laughs> it, is, I just imagine like that. Uh, Warm it up. Elevate it. <laughs> That cream. <laughs> Sweeteners. <laughs> that guy. But instead, he's like doing the reverse where every is just like something's flying out of his Ew. mouth Ew. <laughs> into a chocolate vat. But <laughs> Speaking of insane food people. Insane clown posse? Yes. Um, I came up the stairs to record today and I saw <laughs> your, your Guy Fieri uh, stand at uh, your, your life size cardboard cutout of Guy Fieri that you strategically <laughs> placed around the house and even though I expect his presence now he still always gives me a sense of like Uneasy. there's a person there or there's yeah. not and, oh yeah, uh, dude! Well, he still fucking scares us, and we live with him. Yeah, we live with him. <laughs> now you have <laughs> he him. He over... scares the shit out of us nine <laughs> times out of ten. <laughs> you have him over by the uh, the kitchen table now, mm-hmm. and <laughs> or I should say your dining room table, the new one that you got over the weekend. Yeah, we got a new table. It looks nice. nice. Um, oh, thank I was, you. It's I was... tall. I like tall tables. Oh, yeah, me too. As a as a tall person who does not fit in most <laughs> furniture, I'm not as afflicted with it as um, my dad was. My dad always refers to uh, disdainfully to furniture at establishments as dollhouse furniture because <laughs> he can't he can't fit. Be right. It's also because your father's a fucking frost giant. He is. I've he's, fucking seen the guy. He's gigantic. He's way bigger than me. <laughs> like, and you're one of the few people. Just one of the few people, not even in our friend group, just few people that can say that. They'd be like, oh, yeah, my dad's bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of folks in our generation are bigger than our parents. Yeah. Like, I know I certainly am. I'm taller than my mom and my dad. Uh, But, like, it's rare that, like, a dad is taller than their son, especially a, a gigantic scarecrow like you. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck, man? Your dad is, he's a big boy. He I, is. I climb him like a tree, but not in that way. I always <laughs> wished I could, as a as a wee child, I always wished I could get him into the stuff that I liked, because he is exactly the sort of gigantic splat, uh, splotchy Scotsman that claymores were invented for. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but he, he has no interest in the violent arts. He is, he is only a computer man. <laughs> but uh, I was, He makes computers he, kill. He, does, he looks like... Actually, Mr. that's true. He's a defense contractor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. When he's at his desk, he looks like Mr. Incredible at the insurance office. Yeah, I bet he does. <laughs> Which, by the way, like, what the fuck were they doing giving him an insurance job? He's the fucking strongest man in the world. Just make him work construction. It's yeah. meant to be a. It's like, meant. Just give him something where he can utilize his strength. Make him a fucking cop. It's make meant him to something be something who wants to bust crime. He wants to bust the crime and so bad. Make him a cop. It's meant to be a treatise. It's literally meant to be a um a, a, a sort of a statement about how when I used to watch like the DC like Justice League shows i would always be like <laughs> superman just frick, like superman just friggin like hit dark side with a car like how would you feel if that was your fucking car <laughs> and like even as a kid it used to make me mad i'd be like well i guess i can't go to fucking work now you just, <laughs> superman used my car to bludgeon dark side across the street and it didn't even hurt him so he just smashed my car for fucking nothing you <laughs> asshole i see that's and the so thing they could have now they, they could have made that interesting they could have touched upon that but in they, the movie but they don't but they had him be Working the the forces behind the scenes that would have to respond to it when something yeah, like that happened, and that's what I'm saying. Like they could have had something like that, yeah. but it would have made the it would have made Brad Bird's fucking 
uh, Ayn Brand libertarian nightmare movie <laughs> and, and it's something nobody would watch. Because <laughs> we all, we, we go to the movies, we all want to fucking feel special. Uh, and you're going to feel special if he ends up going to a job where all day he has to hear old ladies be like, oh, my husband was killed by a super throwing a fucking truck at a bad guy. He just stole some bubblegum and he fucking flattened my husband with a truck. <laughs> <laughs> there is this comic that I, I occasionally see and it always gets me. Oh, yeah. And it's like this, uh, this like little girl and it's like her first day of school. And she's talking with her mom about how excited she is to go to school. And they get her all ready, get her out the door, get in the car. <laughs> the, the, the gun truck from Sonic Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Barrels down the road and just all the cars go flying. <laughs> That's great. I was like, all right, what horrible what horrible disaster from a from a cartoon are we gonna hear about? I was I was not expecting the gun the gun truck from Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> it all gets me every time. <laughs> That's good. I wanted to go really back like before that. I forget about it. Was that made by what's his face Ellis? I have no idea. Ale- Nigel Ellis, whatever his fucking name is. God damn it! Oh, the guy who made Grody same face comics, and then he left the place that he hated working at, and then his art got better. <laughs> Fuck Adam Ellis. It. Adam, that's I think that is that Adam Ellis. Uh, Adam, Adam-, Adam Ellis is the fellow who gave everybody the same nose. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. That's it. he draws the characters with the big wide eyes. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. people's. And, like, I didn't really like that style until he started drawing the comics that he wanted to draw. Yeah. And, like, he could actually put life into them and, like, oh, so this is what it was supposed to kind of make you feel the whole time. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Yeah. Adam Ellis. That's the fella. Yeah. I want to make a dumb Guy Fieri joke that's not as funny as the thing we were just saying. (laughs) 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 But uh, I I love our Guy Fieri. There he is. I noticed that his shirt says like smokehouse and brewery and stuff yeah, on it. Yeah, pagan anchor. Can can you imagine if like you met Guy Fieri or if you were on an episode of a show or whatever and you just kept referring to his favorite smokehouse like oh I gotta go to the, take you to the smokehouse so the smokehouse was really cool uh-huh. making reference he was at a t-shirt that said the smokehouse on it and then like he took you there and it was like a place where you smoked crack. <laughs> and you're like this is the smokehouse this is the smokehouse bro and it's like I was expecting, I was expecting an, an eatery or a food establishment. Why the hell would you think that? <laughs> like he's honestly confused why you would think that he wasn't talking about it's, the crack it's den. A, it's a smokehouse. We we come to smoke crack. I, I don't. What? Where? Where's the confusion coming from? I, I don't get it. I thought you were cool. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, are you a fucking narc? <laughs> Get him! <laughs> quick, quick, boys, roll out on this fool! <laughs> and they're shooting condiment guns at you. <laughs> like the condiment king! <laughs> I remember condiment king. <laughs> From that episode of Batman. The yeah. Internet. Put him on screen. There he is, the best supervillain of all time, the condiment king. I think he was on, um... Uh, I think condiment king's on the fucking, like, he's that Harley... Too. <laughs> no, I think he's in that Harley show. Oh, is he? Uh, the, uh, I mean, it makes HBO sense. One. He's, uh, I, if I recall correctly, he's Kite Man's nemesis, <laughs> who Kite Man hates. And, like, Harley, no, um, what's their name? Ivy and uh, Kite Man are going to get married, and they're trying to book this wedding venue that uh, Kite Man is really excited about. And their main rivalry for getting it is fucking Condiment Man and his wife. It's funny. Because <laughs> even in the episode he was in, he wasn't actually a villain. He was, like, some, some he was guy that was, yeah, that was brainwashed or hypnotized or something. Yeah. And being like, I'm the Condiment King! And then Batman beats him up and he's like, what the fuck am I, why am I dressed like this? What the <laughs> hell? What am I doing with he my He says mind? all these curse words in the show. Yeah. And all it took He's was like, what the fucking assa- shit? <laughs> Batman! <laughs> all it took was getting assaulted by a billionaire, and now I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> my God, Batman, you cured my... You cured my madness! All you needed to do was punch me in the face! <laughs> <laughs> I like your Mark Hamill. <laughs> I thank you. It's fun to do. <laughs> it's not very good, but it is fun to do. It, mm-hmm. it is pretty good. Um, the blah, 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 blah. um, Condiment King, I think, also made a, a brief, very brief, potentially background cameo in Brave and the Bold as well. Hmm. From I, I distinctly remember watching that show and seeing him in the background, and be like, "Hi, 
hey, it's the kind of a king. He's sort of up there. Then with- again, that show of all Batman shows, that's like the show to have the references and shit. Oh, look, it's that guy. Yeah, that, that was old- a fun show. I I really liked Brave and the Bold. That show completely fell off everyone's radar, which is sad because it was a lot of fun. It was outrageous. Outrageous. And uh, best Aquaman for sure. Yeah. 100% best Aquaman. I don't care how, you know, you like your Aquaman. John DiMaggio Aquaman from Brave and Bold is best Aquaman. (laughs) You had me at John DiMaggio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, the Aquaman. He's a he's a big, burly himbo. And so I love him. (laughs) <laughs> way better better than the shitty aquaman and uh justice league unlimited oh my god i fucking hated that aquaman fuck how he, did he was he was insufferable that's right he was like really gross looking yeah right? he had the long hair and the weird beard and the fucked up hook hand he looked like kid rock and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> kid rock aquaman with the fucking hook kid rock man he he gets <laughs> kid rock man kid rock man <laughs> Kid Rock Man! <laughs> I'm always afraid I look like Kid Rock with my long hair. <laughs> oh, I like Kid Rock Woman. <laughs> I just see um, Death Stranding guy. What was it? Thank Norman you. Reedus and his funky fetus. Norman Reedus is far more flattering than, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> than Kid Rock. Oh. Taylor, once if you uh uh-huh. if you like lose all your weight, what if you just like like Game you, Kid you, get, Rock? you get really thin and you like start shaving and it just turns out you look identical to Mads Mickelson. I'd love that. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah, I'd be I'd be fucking I'd go to Kojima's house and have sex with him. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'd fucking use that shit to my advantage. Good, I know you're one of the chosen. <laughs> <laughs> is this like a fucking like we're all is this like Final Fantasy 7? We're all Mads Mickelson clones and hoods going reunion. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna find me a Nippleheim. <laughs> we're, we're all like different emotions of Mickelson. <laughs> so it's like, like that episode Happy's of Mickelson. It's like Joy's that, Mickelson. Oh Glad my Anger's God. Mickelson. Fucking God. That is Rage so, Mickelson. Glad <laughs> Mickelson. What a that is so fucking stupid, Sad, <laughs> Sad's Mickelson. How is that not like a parody cartoon somewhere? Yeah. Uh, and I also imagine they're all wearing Organization 13 coats. <laughs> <laughs> I picture them. I naturally, without you having to say anything, that is immediately what I pictured when you described that. What else would they be wearing? Exactly. What oh else? What else is there? You, you, have a, you have a bunch of clones doing evil foreboding pl- stuff. You put them in leather... Leather, uh, leather trench coat. Leather trench coat. So the whole shit ton of zippers on them. Yeah, and then you get it, and then you have sex with Tetsuya Nomura. <laughs> yes, I just want to go to Japan and fuck game developers. <laughs> Is that so wrong? Have <laughs> Miyazaki lick your feet? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. So, oh, oh, my God, p That should never remind you of anything. <laughs> no. Uh, remind, uh, remind, that reminds me of this feet, foot I was licking. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Lissa, Lissa and I were watching a lot of Dexter's Lab over uh-huh. the weekend. Uh-oh. And it's, it's a really, like, the show hits way different when you're a grown-up. I bet. It's really cute and funny. And you don't really appreciate when you're the age of Dee Dee and Dexter, you just, like, think like them. But when you are watching as an adult... It's very cute and obvious how realistic kids they are, mm-hmm. and it's it's like a lot funnier in a different way. Like their reactions to stuff, it's like, oh, that is how a kid would react to that. That's that's how I would have reacted to that, and it's yeah. like, it's like a lot funny. And then you you're like, stupid. oh god, I'm I'm approaching the age range of Dexter's parents, and <laughs> the things that they do make sense to me now. Dexter instead secret, of, Dexter secret, yeah. Uh, but there's an episode where Dexter fucks up his shoes, uh-huh. and Dee Dee's like. I know how to fix your shoes. We got to lay out uh, some some cookies and, and do these rituals, and it'll summon like shoe gnomes that'll fix your <laughs> shoes. And he's like, "That's stupid. I'm not doing that." You are stupid. Uh, yeah, he's like, "That's that's dumb." And and Dee Dee's like, "Nothing ventured, nothing gained." And he's like, "Fine, I'll do it just to prove you wrong," <laughs> which is his reason for doing anything most of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they do the ritual, and it summons the shoe gnomes, and they fix <laughs> Dexter's shoes. And Dexter's like, "Holy shit, shoe gnomes!" 
And then uh, he's like, what do I do with these guys now that they fixed my shoes? Because they, like, want to set up permanent shop in his lab. Mm-hmm. And he's like, <laughs> the shoe gnomes are like, everyone always kicks us out after we fix their shoes. We have, we don't have a permanent workshop. We're always on the move, pretty much. So Dexter's mm-hmm. like, oh, I guess I have enough space here to let you stay for a while. And then Dee Dee walks in, and all the gnomes become very, very obsessed with her feet. Oh, no. And <laughs> Lisa and I were like, why? First off, why did they make this? <laughs> and how did they let them put this on the, sh- the on TV? Because this is because everybody <laughs> knew that yeah. that people were weird about fetishes. Yeah, like uh, everyone else is just like, ha! Ah, it's it's funny that they would. They're shoe gnomes. They're attracted to feet. Ha ha ha! They yeah. like it. Ha ha! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How they're, simple. They're, in a in a in a pre Dan Schneider world the we rest, lived in. Oh god. The rest of the episode is about them trying to escape the gnomes lusting after Dee Dee's feet. And it's we like, were like that fucked up total drama episode. Yeah. Oh god. I tried to go <laughs> on. I, I never watched with any the of with that the show. fucking fairy that sniffs farts. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. I knew. I intentionally knew as little as I possibly could about the total. The only drama. reason I know about it is because a bunch of people have made videos about how fucked up it is. There's an episode of Total Drama Island where they're like, I don't know why, but I, they're all young, like little. They're all like kid age. So they did like, like a Muppet Baby series of it or oh, something. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's that, and there's this fucking gnome fairy creature that like pops out of hidden spaces after children fart and he he sniffs up the green cloud the fuck is wrong with this it's the most fucked up thing i've ever seen in my life i'm not lying that shows canadian and i will only assure you that i'm not lying just so that please don't google this (laughs) don't put this on your search history taylor you're gonna end up on a list Taylor, I have to. No, oh, God. You Put can't. A- you can't tell me about. Oh, you have terrible. to, huh? You have to, huh? Put a clip of it right here. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure I found somehow a gif of the fart. I'm gonna fucking vomit. <laughs> I almost fucking threw up when I watched that shit. I was like, I can't believe this. I was mostly. <laughs> that's fucking vile. <laughs> I made myself gag this morning due to my own antics. What? Uh, you mean your <laughs> antics? Now I'm scared. Uh, on uh, Jen and I go for walks in the morning. Go walk. And there is a street sign where, like, I guess it's like right next to a bus stop. So the pole on it is just covered in like chewed gum, oh. like all the way up and down it. <laughs> I walk past it and I, I mind like raking it. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <In> my mouth. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and then one of the fake jump. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of impressive when like a thought of yours that you made up in your own head yeah. also makes you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm capable of such horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what the fuck is up with kids' cartoons, man? I, it's, I I'll tell you why. It's because all animators are fucking gross perverts, and <laughs> they they finally get a chance to work on anything. And then the minute one of their innocent fucking writers is like, "Ha ha!" And then they, the sister gnomes they like her feet. Ha ha! It's funny. And then all of them are like, "Oh yeah, she likes the feet, dude." <laughs> Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> Make up rubber feet. The Robert Downey Jr. comes in and, and adds a dragon fart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then the God. total drama fairy comes in and sniffs it. That's just Robert Downey Jr. Gets yeah. Blasted with the dragon fart, and there's also the fairy just. <laughs> no, no, Robert Downey is the fairy. <laughs> Robert Downey fairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert Downey is the fart gnome, everybody. <laughs> the, the industry's too busy. This is the '90s. The industry's too busy being mad at John K to pay attention to what we're doing. <laughs> what people are? I think people are just indifferent to John K now. We're all done being mad at him. No, Kay. back then. Oh, I was saying, oh gotcha. If, if, like quick while they're while everyone's mad at John K and obsessing over what he's doing. <laughs> Please, let's sneak this like foot fetish in a children's show. Uh, yeah. My my head's just hanging on him for a second, being like, man, he's worse than canceled. Ever since canceled out labels, he's worse than canceled. He's forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> like, that That was like a, that was the huge straw that broke a camel's much strained back. 
where like everyone was already sick of his shit, and then cancel let's, out labels let's, happened. And let's like, let's nope. ex- explain what this whole debacle okay, is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did a Kickstarter yeah. for a... Oh, just so you know, John K is the guy yeah, yeah. Who, who helped create Ren and Stimpy. The Ren and Stimpy yeah. man. Uh, he's, he's one of the minds behind Ren and Stimpy. Uh, but he also gained kind of a, ooh, a habit for being on the uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, salacious side when he's, it came he's, to he's pretty molesty. Yeah, when it when it came to um a bit groomy. Yeah, allegedly. Mm. In Minecraft, Got it with uh, our lawyer is looking at us with a face <laughs> and saying allegedly. He's mouthing he's the word allegedly. Totally, absolutely, allegedly a groomer molester. Yeah. And uh, um, in Minecraft, and in Minecraft, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's so he's terrible as a person, but as like an industry person, he was notorious for uh, being hard to work with. Yeah, being hard to work with and not making deadlines. He got kicked off his own fucking show. Yeah, exactly. Season two, right? There, there's even a bit in, in The Simpsons. Wow, where they make fun of him. Where really? They're, they're, there's like, and they had him on as a guest animator. Yeah. Well. No, this is like an old Simpsons oh. when like Ren and Snippy was still running. Oh wow, really? Like, um, there's a bit where I didn't know this. Where there's I there, yeah, there's like a film festival or something, uh-huh. and um, it was like, and here's this bit from uh from is is either here's a bit from Ren and Snippy or here's a bit from John Kierfukowski or however you say his name. or whatever and Chris, uh, Chris Falusi or something. Kirk, Kirk, Nancy Pelosi. He doesn't yeah. deserve a correct pronunciation. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and like, and here's the cliff, and then it just shows like an image saying, uh, "It's not done." <laughs> <laughs> no way. The no shade. Way. And, no way is that. In, in so real. many words, I'm definitely paraphrasing because it's Holy been a while shit. since I saw it. But it's basically this, like, here's John. Is- Tell the future once more. <laughs> Here's John Kay's work. It's not done. Yeah. Yeah, John Kay is notorious for a lot of things. And so, eventually, one day, this was a few years back. Um, more than a few years back now, but... Yeah, three or four, I think. Uh, oh, God, it must... Yeah, well, anyway... Um, and he's like... Since he released it. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Yeah, he, like, years oh, ago, really he, he made a Kickstarter it. for a film he wanted to make called Cans Without Labels. And he got a lot of money for it. Like, how he got a couple hundred thousand, right? I, I can't remember. I don't know what the total was. I don't want to blow any numbers out of proportion. Yeah. Well, we, we have no idea how much he actually made. Point is, he made a lot of money. And then years and months passed by with no real, like, progress on this film until he finally just, like, released it unfinished. Mm-hmm. Like, isn't part of it just an animatic? Yeah, I think so. Where it's just black and white, not I've seen, really animated I've seen lots stuff. of bits and pieces. There's, like, lot. it's very inconsistent. Like, the coloring and the line work and the animation is very inconsistent. Yeah. Um, like, like, he clearly covered in some of his, some of his, like, rough sketch yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is really funny considering he's one of the pioneers of Flash animation. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was one of the original guys that really pushed... For like, yo, Flash is awesome. It makes animation super easy. Whoa. Like, imagine all the creative, awesome things you could do with it. It's like, oh. Did Remember, you- how- <laughs> see how great it is to make animations by yourself because nobody wants to work with you anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, no- and you can you can, you can can release things uh, independently because nobody wants to to pay for your things to, to show on their channels <laughs> Cans without labels yeah and even if it was publishers. even if it was done the it fucking sucked it goes into his weird like dad issues dad issue child abuse fantasy mm-hmm. where it's like the dad is psychotic and he beats his children and mm-hmm. you're supposed to laugh at it yeah and he forces <laughs> them to eat a face instead of be worried yeah yeah uh it's just like what a what a colossal fucking nightmare that entire ordeal was and like nobody liked it yeah it came out nobody liked it and now nobody's talking about john k except us right now <laughs> and, and actually wait no people do talk about john k still but only to, to make, make jokes to, about to make fun of him yeah it's like man talking about living long enough to see yourself become the villain but here's the twist he always was he was always the villain and he did it entirely to himself mm-hmm and the and the funny part is you could still enjoy Ren and Stimpy because let's face it the only reason that show got anywhere was because Bob Camp yeah. and and some of the other folks on the show yeah. actually making all that shit work. 
Uh, cause certainly he might have come up with them. Was adult party cartoon John K? Yeah, yes, which is why it's horrible. fucking garbage. That was horrible. That was the worst thing I'd ever seen. And yeah, I was, was like, I hate this. This <laughs> it was the it was the prequels of of cartoons. Yeah, it was the Star Wars prequels of cartoons where a creative <laughs> mind was in charge and I nobody like told him no. Yeah, I like the prequels too. Um. I, I I will say uh, you know what that does a disservice to the prequels to relate them to John K. <laughs> <laughs> they're not that bad, no. but they're bad for the same reason. Yeah, well, 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 we could all die on on the most unpopular hill on the internet of uh, the prequels aren't completely awful. They're 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 especially now. Yeah, after seeing Rise of Skywalker, all the Star Wars <laughs> movies are fucking masterpieces. Yeah. A masterpiece. Well, Rise of Skywalker was a masterpiece, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, if you do want us to, to hear us talk about that, go back onto our backlog and watch like episodes like ninety five or one hundred and five or something. It was right before the pandemic happened, right? Was it? Or was oh, that yeah. a year before? I don't remember. No, no, it was a. It was the year prior okay. because. Oh what? Yeah, so that should be a, be around. Because Sonic the Hedgehog was the last movie yeah. that ever came out in theaters ever again. Go go to episode. Right hallucinated the Green Knight. Go to episode one hundred and five, and then uh, tell me how close I am to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for the record, like we were the only people in that movie theater, and like oh, we yeah. wore we wore masks indoors. We were all vaccinated. We did everything. We did everything above board, but we didn't even need to because we were literally the only people there. Yeah. And that was like the first time I've actually been to the movies in a year and a half. Yeah. Which is a shame because uh, Alamo's going chapter 11 and that was one of my favorite places to go. I loved Alamo. Uh, now they're, they're, they're going away. Apparently. I don't it know. Sucks. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know exactly what the situation is, yeah. but they're on hard times, which sucks. Because, boy oh boy, that was a fun place to go. I loved it. Whenever any of the friends was like, yo, you want to go to Alamo and watch this? Of course the answer would be yes. <laughs> the answer was going to be yes. You want to go to the Alamo and watch Ball Tuggers 3? Yes, at the Alamo. At the Alamo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd watch Scarlett Johansson's Ghost in the Shell at the Alamo. You you want to watch... Oh, wait, I did! <laughs> you want to watch Tugger Nuts Goes to the Circus? No, I'd rather watch uh, The Green Knight, which is the same story, really. It involves some kind of tugging. Yep. And the aftermath. <laughs> Well, here's hoping that sometime there's an actual movie that comes out that's worth going to the Alamo for. Yes, the the new movie by John Kay. Uh, Cans without dignity. <laughs> Cans without fatherly love. <laughs> Cans without therapy. Yeah. What if a person was never loved and also allowed to do animation? <laughs> then then they'd be an animator. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Then you get Meat Canyon. Oh, then. <laughs> now, even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe. <laughs>